Yesterday, a leaked draft of the Supreme Court majority opinion, written by Justice Alito and published by Politico, shows that the Supreme Court will overturn Roe v. Wade in their decision in Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization. The opinion would allow states like Mississippi to reduce and criminalize access and support for abortion care. This is an unprecedented breach of security. Never in modern Supreme Court history has a draft opinion been released while a case was still in deliberation. So while this leaked opinion is not the official decision of the court, we cannot assume that the file documents will be significantly different. In the opinion, Justice Alito opens a window into decades of Christian right anti-abortion rhetoric. Roe v. Wade was wrongly decided, Alito writes, as was Casey v. Planned Parenthood, the case establishing limits on states' restrictions on abortion care. Alito's draft is rife with anti-abortion language, referencing unborn babies, for example, a term used by anti-abortion activists across the country. The fight to overturn Roe v. Wade is not new. The Christian right have been organizing against abortion for 50 years, slowly chipping away at access and autonomy aided by other factions of the right, including militia groups. Chloe Cooper and Fred Clarkson from PRA wrote for Religion Dispatches about the convergence of militia and anti-abortion activists in the Northwest United States under the banner of abortion abolition. Abortion abolitionists seek to eradicate all abortion care, as Tina Vasquez and Chloe Cooper write, a phenomenon we've already seen in states like Texas and Oklahoma. The idea that abortion runs contrary to religious beliefs, including Christian theology, is not true. There is a vast community of religious organizations that are decidedly pro-choice, as covered by Fred Clarkson for PRA. Find an annotated directory of the vast but underestimated pro-choice religious community on our website. The impact of this draft opinion, if indeed adopted by the court as their final decision, will be catastrophic. 26 states have laws that would ban abortion in state upon the overturn of a federal ban on abortion restrictions. Pregnant people will be forced to carry fetuses to term, causing lasting damage to their health, mental, and physical. And Alito's opinion predicts the court's interpretation of constitutional support for other protections based on a right to privacy, including fundamental protections for LGBT people to fall If a majority of the court holds that we don't have a right to privacy from the government's interference into our bodily autonomy, then, as Alito directly implies, we also no longer have a right to accessing birth control or right to have sex without fear of criminalization. In short, laws that attack bodily autonomy are given free reign under Alito's vision of the United States. The implications for cisgender women and girls and transgender and non-binary people are staggering. If state criminalization of abortion care is our future, there are ways we can support the -the on-the-ground activists and reproductive justice workers. As Loretta Ross has said, the flip side of decreasing abortion access in some states is going to mean we're going to have abortion tourism states as well. And so they need to prepare. And the network of abortion funds is going to play a heavy role in that. What we can do right now is to donate to abortion funds like our partners, the National Network of Abortion Funds, and local funds across the country. Personally, as a non-binary person who has access to miscarriage care and gender affirmative care, I'm giving myself permission to mourn and rage today. And tomorrow I will once again join hands with my comrades who continue to make sure that every person living in the United States has access to abortion care, birth control, gender affirming care, relationship recognition, and true bodily autonomy. In solidarity, Heron, and all of us at Political Research Associates.